Hi, welcome to the sixth and final part of uh, this uh, little MQP course, MQP 1.0. Um, and uh, now I'm going to talk about MQP on the wire in terms of composite types and messages and also get to the point of what is the minimum message size um, you can go and express with MQP on the wire. So an MQP message is, uh, has a standard message format um, and uh, the message format that we show here is actually replaceable and extensible. So even extensibility in MQP goes so far that the standard message format um, of MQP can be swapped out for a different one. So there's a tr so foundationally, let's go and remind ourselves, there's a frame transfer protocol under the, under the covers, and there's a message transfer protocol that's, under, that's uh, above that. And the message transfer protocol is um, uh, created by having these transfer frames, and those transfer frames are, they, there's a, um, they're followed by the message per se. The message, the payload, so to speak, that's that's this MQP message, that's that structure. It's standard defined in MQP, but you can go and replace that and uh, make that something else if you need to. So um, the bare message, just kind of a bare message or an annotated message, the bare message is the core of the message. So that contains the properties, the standard message properties, the application properties, whatever you add as properties to that message and the message body that bare message may not be altered or changed by any party in an MQP network. MQP network in that case means you have a client that sends to the queue, then you have another client that pulls from the queue, that queue that sits in the middle, that intermediary may not touch uh, or change in any way that bare message. The other parts, um, the annotation sections, is something that infrastructure can go and touch and can go and manipulate because it may want to go and make annotations it may want to go and uh, keep track of things um, in that frame so the um, for instance the number of um, of deliveries uh, for that particular message that's something um, that is uh, done in the annotations the message um, itself is made out of um, sections and uh, here I have an example building on top of what, we, of what we already know in terms of MQP type encoding. And that shows now how one of those composite types is encoded. Um, and uh, using the property section in the MQP message. So the property section, you see that's the first part of the bare message. The property section defines a message ID, user ID, a to, and a subject, and a reply to, and a correlation ID. So very common message properties. The way you encode these composite types is you encode them as a list and of course you reference the, the type that you mean. So the descriptor is zero and now we have a ulong, 5.3, so that's the constructor for the ulong, for the, uh, for the descriptor and we're choosing a ulong 8 because while the code here, the code, the descriptor code here as you can see is uh, zero and it's this 32 bit zero and then colon and then the 73, um, a 73 hex um, uh, constructor, descriptor code, um, that all boils down to a, hand, a very handy little single byte 73 hex um, as, the, as the type code because it's in the MPP namespace. So I say descriptor, the following descriptor is expressed as a ulong, that ulong is only is uh, small enough to fit into a single byte. So we're gonna make that a ulong eight. So we're referencing that with um, the 7.3. And then the following, the properties are actually encoded as a list. That's how composites are being put on the wire. So the list is a C0. We saw that in the previous uh, session. We only have put four elements on the wire because the way how composite types work here is you can go and only use the first elements and they kind of are ordered by, by priority order here. And uh, so we're gonna, only gonna pick the message ID, the user ID, the two and the subject, and we're just gonna ignore all the other fields, which is perfectly legal for encoding MQP. So you can go and make a message more compact by just setting less metadata. Um, the nice thing here is also what you'll observe is that these standard message properties don't need to go on the wire with a prefix. Um, so you don't need to say reply to and send that in the message because that's a predefined type. It's a schematized type. Um, that we're referencing and both parties know that schema because that's part of the standard MQP type system and therefore we don't need to put reply to or message ID on the wire per se but we can simply rely on that external definition. So we have 
uh, four strings that we're that we're tr uh, transmitting here, um, and um, we do a uh, um, a message ID and a user ID and uh, a a queue name. So where that message goes to and uh, a subject in that subject is hello. So that's fairly easy. That's how we go and transfer the message properties, which is a fairly compact way of uh, transferring that type. The uh, message body has a choice of uh, one of uh, one out of four, one out of three um, options. You can either send one or multiple data sections, and those data sections are just raw binary data. Um, they're binaries, and they're also encoded as a binary array. And if you are carrying anything that's not AMQP encoded, which is very common, so you carry JSON or Message Pack or Avro or Thrift or XML or whatever you like in terms of a um, format, then you can go and do that with the data encoding. So you basically just go and reference the data field, and then you put this your data into the binary that we flow with there. There's a, in the standard properties, I'm sorry, in the standard properties, you see there, there's a content type and a content encoding pre-built. So these are the fields where you can go and then express what you actually put into that um, data, data section. So that's just like HTTP where you can go and specify the content type and also can specify the content encoding should you need that. Um, for text, for instance. Then there's a way to go and to include one or more MQP sequence sections, which are then treated like composite types, or you can go and carry a single MQP value, and because you can go make nested types, um, that's actually um, sufficient to go and carry a lot of complex, inf interesting information um, in uh, MQP. So I'm gonna show you that here, um, how you can go and use a single MQP value to express a, um, um, a book. Uh, we have two books here and you can go and read the JSON. Um, so it's books, um, it's an array of, uh, so we have a book element, that's the outer map, then we have an, um, an array that has two elements. Each of those elements is um, uh, a book description with a title and an array of authors and then an ISBN number. Um, and that translates very directly into JSON, in, in, into AMQP. And if you count the bytes, you'll find that um, it's more or less exactly the same number of bytes that are being put on the wire um, with um, uh, somewhat, somewhat clearer rules around AMQP. I'm not gonna go say anything bad about JSON. It's a wonderful, um, that's a wonderful uh, model per se. And so you create a map that's a single value that has two elements. Um, it has a, um, a key and has a value. So the key is books. Then that, has an, that itself has a value that is a list that has two elements. Um, that uh, list, the first element of that is a map. The map is, has six elements, three uh, key value pairs. One is, um, the first element there is a title, that's a string. The second is, a, is uh, the, uh, the normal accidents, the, the book title. So you can see that it's very similarly structured to JSON, which is nice because you can go and take a JSON encoded structure and map it straight to AMQP and also map it back to JSON uh, without any loss and have it in the native um, AMQP type system. So it's your choice whether you want to go and flow the data as JSON per se or whether you want to flow the data as AMQP. Um, there's going to be no loss. The strength here of uh, the MQP type system is that it is more refined when it comes to data types. So there is three type, three decimal data types. There is you know, a very specific, um, there's a float data type for IEEE floats. And uh, JSON is less precise there um, in terms of data types. It also, MQP has a, has a distinct timestamp data type also something that JSON is lacking. So the type system in MQP is somewhat, somewhat more precise. So if you want to go and flow financial information, then um, the MQP uh, model might be preferable uh, depending on what you do. What you'll see is that, the, that you can go and make them effectively completely structurally identical. So whether which one you choose really depends on your requirements. And you can always go and take an AMQP structure and directly translate it into JSON for further processing by um, other parties which don't understand the AMQP encoding. Uh, if you use schema, external schema, um, if you're leveraging that facility, then you um, end up with something that's a little bit more compact on the AMQP side. 
because we can now externalize the um, the schema, um, the 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 metadata, the descriptive metadata into that schema. As you can see here, we have a composite that's a book, um, and that makes that is. Uh, um, made up of uh, three fields, a title, and an author, and the ISBN, ISBN. So what you'll see here is that you have uh, a map, again, and the map contains uh, books. The key for that is books. Then the list here has um, two elements, um, and uh, they have a descriptor, each of them, um, that's referencing that type. And then you only have the payload data, you don't have the descriptive metadata. So um, the incomplete description then becomes more compact because you can go and now externalize some of that uh, metadata out into the schema and not put that on the wire. What's interesting is that even in this case, um, AMQP can be fully parsed without any of the schema present. So you can still get out all the data, um, but you don't have the labels with it. But uh, with other formats, you have the problem if, that if you don't have the schema present at all, um, you can't parse the content anymore. It's just uh, binary gibberish. And uh, that's not the case with the AMQP encoding here. So um, how's that all? Now let's go and put this all together. AMQP frames, how are we gonna put those on the wire? The frame header has eight bytes. So um, you have the size, that's four bytes. Then you have an offsite, uh, offset um, into the frame header where the payload starts, that is one byte. Um, then you have the type of the frame. The AMQP frame has uh, a zero. Then the SASL frame for the SASL exchange that starts at the beginning, that has a special frame type, that's uh, one. And then two bytes for the channel ID, so you can theoretically have up to 65,000 channels in one direction um, at the connection layer. Then that's followed by the performative, and the performative, for instance, is um, the open and uh, the begin and the attach and the transfer and all those different performatives each have a type declaration in the AMQP specification where all the properties are being defined. And then that's ultimately followed by the payload um, of the frame. And whether there's a payload even with that frame really depends on the definition of um, the frame of what the performative says. And the performative, for instance, for transfer says that the AMQP message follows that. So with the transfer, the AMQP message, which I discussed before, the set of um, of uh, data that is following then the transfer performative. So let's put this all together. What does that mean in terms of, the, of wire footprint? What is the minimal size AMQP message you can put on the wire? Um, you flow those um, uh, messages with a transfer performative. So we, I'm adding this all together. So the frame header itself has eight bytes. Um, that's what you put in the wire. Then you have the transfer performative per se that has as with its um, with the um, um, a descriptor um, has a five byte penalty. Then you have to go in and set the link handle. That's uh, there's some the shortest possible version is one byte, but practically it's going to be four bytes, uh, five bytes. Delivery ID five bytes. The delivery tag is going to be six bytes. Uh, the message format per se, zero standard format is going to be one byte. So the theoretical, well, the theoretical minimum is like 11 bytes. Uh, the factual limit is like 22. And then the MQP message per se, we're going to choose an MQP value. That um, descriptor, a constructive descriptor is going to be three bytes. And then the hello per se is going to take eight bytes. So that's together is like 11 bytes. So the minimal size of a MQP message um, that you can put on the wire um, well, assuming all the other properties being default is uh, 41 bytes. That's not a lot of overhead for a protocol that gives you uh, multiple level, levels of multiplexing, gives you um, a, its own data, data encoding, and gives you a, no, a great number of facilities um, for um, throttling, for management, even on small devices and in hyperscale systems. Um, so you get effectively in those 41 bytes here, you get all of those features for a single message transfer, which is actually pretty amazing. What you should look at when you compare this to other protocols, which claim to have much, much smaller footprint is um, what, you, what you get in terms of features here, what you don't get uh, potentially in those others. And then you should also go and take that into, take into account what you have in, in terms of other overhead. If you use IPv6, with TLS and um, so IPv6, TCP, V6 on la layer on top of this with TLS, 
you can easily get to 100 byte in terms of overhead just for that uh, foundational um, uh, transport. Um, it's like 80 bytes if you use IPv4. Um, so you're already paying a foundational tax onto which you are then layering kind of the frame tax for um, AMQP. And then you have, have already made a pre pretty big down payment kind of on your, on your frame. And then you should go and maximize the use of that frame by sending more data along with it. And then the respective um, overall protocol overhead actually shrinks. And then also one thing to uh, take note of, if you have um, a comparison between protocols um, and you're using TLS, then you should keep in mind that uh, with uh, encryption protocols, you always get padding. So if someone claims that they can go and uh, encode wonders what capabilities in uh, two bytes or four bytes, then um, all that advantage is going to be padded away by AS256 because that only works in 16 byte increments. Um, so that's so much for um, AMQP as an introduction in, uh, in six parts. There's more. Um, so we're going to have another set of courses um, on transactions. That's uh, part of the course spec that I have not discussed uh, here. Um, there's a model for how to do global addressing in AMQP. And there's also a specification that's currently in draft that's about management. How do we go and address entities? How can we go and create a queue um, inside of an AMQP broker if you want to? Um, that's something that people have been saying is missing from the core spec and that is something that has been in the 0 0.9 that's actually being added on using the management specs. So we're going to talk about that in a later course and also about the subject of claim-based security. There's a very cool draft spec in, in flight um, on that. We also already implemented at Microsoft in, the, um, in our brokers. And I'll talk about that more in a forthcoming course. I hope this was uh, uh, interesting for you. Thank you very much for your attention and for watching these videos.